Good morning. Good morning to you. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to your baby. Yeah. This is Tracy coming back with another video. Happy Monday. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for clicking on my video and watching. I do appreciate that. Now go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified and reminded when your girl upload another video and when I go live sometime. Because I ain't been live in about two weeks. Sorry, y'all. But I do go live and comment. Y'all know I love comments. I love interacting with you guys. Comment, like, and share. That's it. Yep. So happy Monday, you guys. A new day, a new week. Y'all know what's happening. Yeah. So, woo, how was y'all weekend? Leave in the comments and tell me how your weekend went. And tell me what y'all got planned for the, for the week. And so, I'm just sitting here. Got to work a little early. I want to throw my video out. Give y'all some. Look. Okay. I got my coffee. Okay. I got my coffee. But look. I want to talk to y'all about this. I don't know if you guys heard this, but I don't, it's this lady in the hospital, in the nursing home. She's pretty young. She's been in a vegetative, vegetative, vegetative state for 10 years. So she ends up pregnant. They didn't know she was pregnant until the baby started coming out. I guess a nurse went in there to clean her. And she was making these noises like she was in pain or something. And I guess they went to clean her and do what they do all the time. And the crown of the baby's head was coming out. Okay. Now, her family is outraged, which I don't blame them. Okay. So now they're um, pulling in all the visitors, male visitors, male workers for the past 10 months. Anybody that even came through there as a visitor, visitor, employee, whoever, they're, they're doing a DNA test on them, okay, on, on all the men. Now, the family of the girl, yes, they're outraged and everything, but they, they're going to, they're taking, they're going to keep the baby, okay, and they, and they, they said that the baby will be loved no matter what, loved and taken care of no matter what. Now, think about this. A patient, a woman is laying in a vegetative state. When you're in a vegetative state, that, that means you can't do anything. You're just, you're a vegetable. You're just Laying there, you're not even. <sighs> it's like you're not alive, but you are. OK, it's you. You have no con function. Of <sighs> this is the most. Disturbing situation I've heard, OK, because I be analyzing everything. And I'm thinking it was a nurse, a male nurse. And here's why me sitting here analyzing it from yesterday. Uh, when you're in a vegetative state, that means she had a catheter in her. Okay. Only a nurse would know how to take that catheter out. I mean, you have to move. Well, I know the you know, the, 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 the vaginal entrance where the, the penis go is different than where the, the catheter is, but you would, you still need to move the catheter so you can get up in there comfortably, you know, so he had to move the catheter out. And then you just, and then, so I'm talking like I'm him and you just going to crawl on to her Look, like, 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 like Seeley said, you know, on Color Purple, he just, I just laid it, let him do his business. 
I just laid there and let him do his business. And and then, you know, after he done with his business, I just turned over. So he just got up on top of her and did his business. How many times did he get up on her like that and do his business? You have to be a mentally disturbed, sick individual to do that. For one, that that's dis, it's disgusting. It is a huge violation. Okay, she is totally helpless. She couldn't fight him off. She couldn't scream. She couldn't do it. He just. Who, the person that did that, I bet you he showed signs of some mental issues as a child. You can, I, I can't see somebody just willy-nilly waking up being crazy. It has to progress into something. He was weird and had some things going on as a child. And if he didn't have something going on as a child... Something had to happen to him to make him lose his mind like that. Okay. And to lay up there on a person that's basically dead. Not medically dead, but dead. Can't talk, can't move, can't do anything. In a vegetative state, that means your brain is not functioning. You're just laying there. And I'm saying that so you guys can get the picture. And he gets on her and, 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 and. <sighs> it's no telling how many times he did it. Now we got this baby that's brought into the world. OK, even though the family is going to love this baby and give this baby everything. But what about the family history? The, I, I can't. It's just it's just awful. And I am I'll be glad when they show who did this. I live in Sacramento, California, and about, I don't know, I think it was about five years ago, they had this elderly woman that kept getting repeatedly raped by a police officer. She was like in late 80s, real old and just an old, helpless, defenseless woman. This police officer repeatedly raped her multiple times. He was going to her house at night when he's on his beat. You know, they call it the beat. I mean, he wasn't doing it every night, but he was doing it whenever he felt, you know. He was raping this old woman. A police officer. And I don't, I can't, I got to Google the story. I can't remember how they found out about it. I can't remember. It was a while back. I just thought about it when I was thinking about this lady in this hospital. People that we trust. And I think the first time she called him, I think something happened to make her call the police. And then when he came to do whatever he had to do. I guess that's when he got wind that she was by herself or whatever. It was a reason why she called them in the first place. But since then, he was going by back over there raping her. And I don't know how it happened that she told on him. I got to Google it. But when you somebody you trust. She in a hospital defenseless, defenseless. Here is a nurse. I know it's a nurse. I, how much you want to? I know it was a nurse. 
that came up in there and was raping that woman. In a vegetative state. You got to be a sick motherfucker. Excuse my potty mouth. I thought it was appropriate at this moment. We got law enforcement out here doing stuff. They're human. They just got a job. You don't know who you living by. Jeffrey Dahmer had neighbors. He lived in an apartment complex. He was bringing up people into his apartment, killing them and chopping them up and putting them in his deep freezer. And cooking them and eating them later. He had a neighbor that he, you know, he had a job. He, he would go to work every day. And people be, hi, Jeffrey, how you doing? Talking to him. You got to be careful in life. Just because you work with somebody or you live next door to somebody or they're a police officer, a doctor, a nurse. And I don't care how much investigation people do before they hire you. And it's, they always say it's always somebody closest to you. And in this state, what I mean by closest to you, it could be someone close to you like a family member. But in, in this particular way, I'm talking by saying close, a nurse, somebody that's coming in there washing you up every day, supposed to be taking care of you. Doctors be performing surgery while they high, been drinking and Doing drugs all night long. And they come to work. Police officers. Y'all it's a crazy world out here. And we have to be careful. We have to, we have to be careful. We have to be careful who we let in our circle. We have to be careful. If you know someone that's in a hospital. In a nursing home or something like that. Go visit them. Check in on them. Because if they know they got family members that's going to check in on them. They'll think twice about messing with them. Go check on them if you know somebody in a hospital. Your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grandfather, whoever. Go check them. Don't just leave them in the hands of a stranger. Because they're not going to love them and care for them. Like you would do. Just like daycare centers. Drop in on that daycare center. And if your gut feeling tell you something ain't right. Always. Always trust your gut feeling. Do not second guess your, 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 your gut feeling. That's your sign. God always sends us a sign. Your gut feeling, trust it. Don't second guess it. And I'm, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a horrible, horrible, horrible situation. But I just wanted to share that with y'all today. Something I've seen on the news last night. And it's been on the news. But last night it was just... When they talked about her family and how they was going to take care of the family. And it was just sad. It was just sad. Look here, you guys. I wanted to share that little story with you guys to tell you guys to be careful. And look out for your loved ones. Check in on them, okay? That's what I wanted to tell you guys today. I hope you guys have a wonderful morning. Happy Monday. Remember what I can always say, head up, chest out, and keep your nose just like this. Don't be walking around with your nose all stuck up in the air because you feeling the way you feeling. No. No. If you are feeling that way, work on it. Work on it. 
but don't walk around like that. I can't stand that. Just, just keep your head like this level. Because you know what? It's going to be all right. Remember Romy Rome on Martin? My probation thing going to be all right. Your situation going to be all right. In my Romy Rome voice. Okay? Look. Chest out. Head up. Nose just like this. Okay? And I ain't going to tell you to stay sucker free. You already know that. So until the next video, peace.